This video describes proning, that is, the turning of a ventilated patient onto their front. Prone positioning has been shown to improve oxygenation in patients receiving mechanical ventilation for COVID-19. It is thought that being in a prone position helps to open up areas of the lung, recruiting them so they can be involved in gas exchange. The process of proning a patient must be undertaken carefully to avoid causing harm to the patient or to staff. We would recommend proning patients in the afternoon around 4 to 5 p.m. at a dedicated time and then turning the patient supine so they are lying on their backs the following morning after approximately 16 hours in a prone position. A structured timed approach will allow teams to prone multiple patients. Turning a patient supine in the morning allows medical and nursing review and more senior staff are likely to be present. Ensure that emergency airway equipment is immediately available when proning or when turning to a supine position in case the endotracheal tube is accidentally dislodged. Proning is indicated when there is a PaO2 FiO2 ratio of less than 150 millimeters of mercury or an SpO2 FiO2 ratio of less than 190 despite optimizing positive end expiratory pressure and using muscle relaxants. It should also be considered early, for example, within 12 to 24 hours of mechanical ventilation. There are some absolute contraindications and some relative contraindications to proning a patient. Absolute contraindications include spinal instability, or if the patient has an open chest, or it is less than 24 hours after cardiac surgery. Relative contraindications include multiple trauma, facial fractures, head injury, frequent seizures, raised intraocular pressure, a tracheostomy that's been inserted for less than 24 hours, cardiovascular instability, some patients with morbid obesity, the second or third trimester of pregnancy, severe asthma, recent abdominal surgery, and an open abdomen or a recent stoma. Successful proning relies on a well-organized team. It is essential to meet with the members of the team and to allocate their roles and make sure they understand what they need to do. Okay, so we need to turn this patient prone. So I'm gonna take the head end and look after the airway. I need you two to be on the side by the ventilator and you two to be on the side away from the ventilator. Okay. okay, thank you. All of the team should wear personal protective equipment, often referred to as PPE. The first thing to do is a pre-procedure check. You should always check and prepare the patient in a systematic manner. First, check the airway. Check the endotracheal tube is secure and note the length of the teeth. Check suction is available and suction if required. For the procedure, you should increase the FiO2, that is the inspired oxygen, to 100%. Also note whether initial intubation was difficult. Secondly, check the breathing. Note the current ventilation, tidal volume, pressures and oxygen saturation. If available, do a pre-procedure arterial blood gas. The ET tube is secure, we're at 25 centimetres of the teeth. I'm going, to, I'm going to put the oxygen on 100%. Next, check the circulation. Ensure all lines are secure and disconnect non-essential infusions. Check the patient is cardiovascularly stable. If unstable, discuss the need for inotropic or vasopressor support. Then ensure the patient is adequately sedated. Check their pupils and reaction to light. Lubricate their eyes and put tape over their closed eyelids to help reduce the chance of the surface of their eyes being scratched. Again, ensure the patient is appropriately sedated and consider muscle relaxation. Then check the extremities. If the patient has a nasogastric tube, stop feeds and aspirate from the nasogastric tube until no further fluid is obtained and then cap the nasogastric tube. 
ensure the urinary catheter is secure and not put under any tension. If there are chest strains in situ, ensure they are clamped for the duration of the roll, but remember to unclamp chest strains immediately afterwards. This is very important. For preparation, aim for a minimum of five staff members. The team member with the most experience in airway management is at the head end and also in charge of the team. Lie the patient flat with the hands tucked under their buttocks. Remove the ECG electrodes. If available, place a sliding sheet under the lower sheet to help with the move. Place the pillows and then a sheet on top of the patient if available. When the patient is prone, pillows should be across the chest and pelvis and over the shins, leaving the abdomen free. For proning in this case, we are using two pillows. Roll the edges of the sheets together. That means the sheet under the patient and the sheet over the pillows as shown here. Here you can see the health workers on either side rolling the top and bottom sheets together at the same time. You can see that this gives them something very firm to hold on to. For the move, the person in charge of the airway and the team at the head of the patient controls the move. Firstly, slide the patient horizontally away from the ventilator. Then, on the instruction of the airway doctor, lift the sheets at the side and turn the patient 90 degrees so they are facing towards the ventilator. Pause to check the airway and lines have not been compromised. The helpers on either side then change their hand positions. Those with their hands at the top move them to the bottom and those with their hands at the bottom move them to the top. On the instruction of the person in charge of the airway, turn the patient the remaining 90 degrees. The person in charge of the airway must hold the tube carefully so that it does not move or come out. It is important to do post-roll checks. Check the ET tube specifically that it is still at the same length and it has not become kinked or disconnected. Reattach the ECG electrodes. Place the patient's arm in a swimmer's position as shown. Place the bed at 30 degrees reverse Trendelenburg. That means head up. Check all pressure areas, specifically the eyes and nose, the breasts, abdominal and genitals. Use extra padding if needed. Eye care on intensive care is very important to prevent irreversible damage, particularly to the cornea and particularly when the patient is nursed in the prone position. The main problems that may affect the front of the eyes in the intensive care are direct injury to the cornea, exposure keratopathy, chemosis, microbial conjunctivitis and keratitis. For good eye care, the eyes should be bathed in warm water to remove dried ointment and the eyes inspected for redness, areas of chemosis, that's conjunctival swelling, and for corneal dullness or opacity. If any of these are found, consider a referral for an eye opinion and give increased lubrication. New eye ointment is applied by pulling the lower eyelid down with a finger and inserting ointment into the gap between the eyelid and the conjunctiva every four hours. If taping is performed, ointment must be put in the eyes before they are closed. Check the position of the eyelashes to make sure they are clear of the cornea to prevent abrasion. Micropore tape is then applied horizontally across the lids to seal them shut. There are also specifically designed clear tapes that fit the shape of the eyes as shown here that are easier to remove. You can cover these with an iPad as shown. When ventilated in a prone position, the eyelids and the face can become more edematous and conjunctival swelling is common. 
direct compression of the eye is also a risk and it is essential to position the head so there is not direct pressure on the eyes. The eye should be lubricated every four hours. We will now demonstrate proning in real time. Could we remove the SATS monitor? Thank you. Please could you roll the top and the bottom sheets together on both sides. We're going to do this in three steps. First, we're going to slide across horizontally away from the ventilator. Then we're going to turn 90 degrees and then the people with the hands on the bottom will switch to the top. People with the hands on the top will switch to the bottom. And then the third step is continuing the roll down to be prone. All movements will go on my account. Is everyone happy with that plan? Yes. yes. So our first movement is across horizontally away from the ventilator. Ready, steady, slide. Our second movement is going to be rolling 90 degrees up, to, again, back towards the ventilator. Ready, steady, roll. And then we need the people with hands on the bottom to... People with hands on the bottom move them to the top, and the hands at the top move to the bottom. And our third step is to continue the roll towards the ventilator. Ready, steady, roll. And are we happy with that position? I think he's too far he's over too far over this way. Okay, so on my couch we'll move across again away from the ventilator. Ready, steady, slide. So Let's just check, are we happy with the pillows, or have they moved? This one's moved. Okay, so we're going to need to lift and slide the pillow back in. So we'll go on my count. Everyone ready? Ready, steady, lift. That's better. And ready, steady, down. We are now going to show you how to roll the patient from their prone position to a supine position so they are lying on their back again. When moving prone to supine, ensure adequate staff are available with a minimum of five people, with one person again dedicated to the airway and keeping the ET tube in position. The pre-procedure and patient preparation are as per the proning procedure. Pre-oxygenate with 100% oxygen, ensure the ET tube and venous lines are secure, discontinue all non-essential infusions and monitoring, ensure adequate sedation and muscle relaxation, ensure any chest strains are secure and below the patient, place the sheet over the back of the patient and roll the edges of the sheets together. This time, move the patient horizontally away from the ventilator so the patient can be turned towards the ventilator. This is now shown in real time. So we're going to do this in three steps. Firstly, we're going to slide across towards the ventilator. Then we'll roll 90 degrees. Top hands will go to the bottom, bottom hands will go to the top, and then we'll third step will be to continue the roll down onto the bed. It will all, we'll all go on my count. Is everyone happy with the plan? Yes. Okay, ready, steady, slide, and then we're going to roll 90 degrees. Ready, steady, roll, and top hands go down to the bottom, bottom hands go up to the top. And on my count, ready, steady, roll. And we have to the position now on the bed. Yep. Sure. And we reapply the pillows. And we can reapply the pillows.
question. Proning can improve oxygenation in COVID-19. Good teamwork and coordination are essential.